I am Lakshmi Shanmukam. I am an Eclipse Platform co-lead and I work for IBM India. So as you all know, Eclipse ID has lots and lots of features. And uh, with every release which is happening uh, every quarter now, more and more features are being added. So in uh, today's session, I would like to show you some of the uh, powerful features in Eclipse and also highlight some of the new features which have been added in the recent releases and uh, also highlight some useful tips and tricks. So uh, first of all, I would uh, like to get started by showing you how and uh, from where you can download Eclipse. So we have the uh, link eclipse.org slash downloads where you can download the uh, Eclipse IDE installer. This is the installer for the latest release and the installer comes with the JRE. So once you have the installer, you can install the packages or you can also choose to directly go to the packages link and uh, see the different packages which are available. Uh, so for example, you have the Java developers, web developers, and uh, you can also click on the link and, uh, okay, sorry. Sorry about that. So this is the link, eclipse.org slash downloads, where you have the um, installer for the latest release. And um, it includes a JRE. So from there, you can always in, uh, install the packages or you can directly click on this download packages link. And uh, it lists all the packages and uh, you can install them. Or if you're interested in, uh, we also have the uh, downloads for the Eclipse SDK, which we produce. So this is the page. Uh, the link will be in the references section in the end of the slide. So here we have the milestone builds, the integration builds, and you can pick this if you want to work with the SDK builds. Okay, so let's move on to the demo in Eclipse. Okay. So Eclipse has lots of shortcuts and it's uh, really difficult to remember each and every uh, shortcut. So we have the uh, command shift L shortcut using which you can view all the available shortcuts in Eclipse. And when you press Command Shift L for the second time, you can see the keys preference page where you have the commands and uh, the key bindings. So you can modify the key bindings. You can also assign your own key bindings. And also for the purpose of presentations and for demos for learning purposes, it's useful to show the key bindings. Like for example here, whenever a command is invoked, so I have this checkbox enabled. So now uh, let's look at some of the uh, appearance tips. So you can zoom in the text in the editor by command plus plus and command minus minus keys. And uh, if you, you can also change the font type and the font size of the uh, font in, the tab in this table and tree in different views. For example, this package explorer tree. So you can go to the font and colors preference page and type tree, edit, and here you can increase the font size, change the font type. Uh, one of the most powerful features in Eclipse is the find actions, using which you can perform a lot of, act a lot of uh, operations just by typing a few keys. For example, you can open views, perspectives, open preference pages. You can also directly execute commands such as the toggle commands right from the find actions. And um, I'll be using this extensively um, throughout the demo so you can see how uh, useful it is. And also it saves you a lot of time and also saves you from having to remember multiple shortcuts. Just have to remember find actions. So now let's look at some of the uh, editor navigation tips. So we, we have the quick switch editor, which is command E, using which you can quickly switch between the open editors. You can just type the name of the file and switch to it. And we can also uh, navigate to the next tab or the previous tab using um, control uh, page up and control page down keys. Also in um, Eclipse, Every uh, file type is associated with the default editor. For example, we have this HTML file and it'll open in the browser, but I can quickly drag it and drop it here to just open it in the Eclipse editor. And uh, of course, we have the link with editor. For example, I can just use this to link it, uh, to reveal the particular file in the package explorer. And when you're looking at um, really large files, for example, I have this display class, and I want to compare two different sections of the file. We have the split editor. 
So I can just use um, find actions and open split editor and then maximize this. So you can view the same file simultaneously and they are independent of each other. So you can also have open outline in one of this and you can open another method in this and you can see you can compare the two sections of the file. So this is useful um, when you are working with large files. You can toggle out of this. You can also quickly uh, close the file using a command W. Uh, also, Eclipse provides a lot of um, quick, na quick editing uh, shortcuts. For example, you can quickly move a line up or down using the option up and down keys. You can duplicate lines using option command up and down keys. And also, you can quickly delete a line. You can also insert a new line any from anywhere just <coughs> by pressing this uh, shift and uh, enter keys. And also, um, Eclipse has provided um, uh, the word completion, which is very useful. For example, I can just type any character and invoke the word completion. So control and dot, and it will try to complete the words which are there in the context, in this case, from the workspace. And um, also, Eclipse provides the spell check Spell checker. Uh, so here you can see the spell. It shows that there is a spelling error. And I can also press command one to view the other options. I can also choose to ignore this particular error. So uh, another very useful feature is the block selection, using which you can uh, select a contiguous block of text. So here, uh, can you see? So you can see the block selection is enabled and I can select this whole block of text. So let me just select this text and I can just change the tags here. So you can see that I have been able to edit the text uh, simultaneously. But what if I want to edit the end tags, right? So I cannot use the block selection. So there's a new feature in Eclipse called the multi-select and multi caret support. So I can invoke that by just using find actions and two multi-selection. So you can see that there is a caret inserted at each and every line, and I can edit on all these lines. So I can just move these carrots and um, edit the tags here. And um, also there are two other ways to enter the multi-select mode. So one option is you can uh, just use alt click and insert the caret at any location, and then you can edit in these locations simultaneously. And the uh, other way is you can use the find dialog and say you can type the text. And there is a new button here, which is called select all. And you can see this has selected all the uh, matches. And there is a caret inserted at each and every location. So you can edit these locations as well simultaneously. And also there are uh, multiple um, commands which are available for the multi caret support. So you can go to, go to the keys preference page and you can see these commands and you can assign your own key bindings for these. By default, we don't have any key bindings assigned for this. And um, in Eclipse, we can also um, go to the last edit location by just pressing control Q. So for example, let me open a different file. I can use control Q and jump to the last edit location. And it also remembers up to 15 last edit locations. So you can navigate through them just by using these options, uh, these uh, buttons on the top. And um, Eclipse also provides a very powerful local history. So up to uh, local history of up to seven days is remembered um, for all the files in the workspace. And you can configure this from the preferences as well. So you can go to any file and then say compare with local history or replace with local history. Uh, but what's more useful is it also works at the container level. So for example, I can go to any project and then say restore from local history. So you can even restore files which have been deleted in a project or any uh, version of the file. You can look at the history. You can view and check which version you want, and you can restore that particular version. And this also works at um, the Java element level. So for example, if I have a class and I have deleted some Java elements, I can go to the outline view. I can say restore from local history. 
and uh, it also shows me all the deleted elements and can restore it from here. So this is also very useful and um, also we have um, the compare uh, editor which can be used to compare two different files. You can also compare two different projects or containers and uh, we can also compare the two archive files. For example, if you have two zips or two jars. So I have, uh, for example, these are two jar files of two different versions of uh, SWT. I just want to compare what has changed, maybe the version numbers. I just say compare with each other. And you can actually see what has changed. Just double click and you can just view the difference easily just by comparing it from Eclipse. Okay, so uh, with this, let's move on to some of the Java tips. So in the uh, package explorer, many a times we have um, long package names, but they have a common prefix. So for example, you can see uh, the package name org eclipse SWT. So you can choose to abbreviate them by just going to the um, preference Java appearance, ab abbreviate the package name, and here you can specify the rule, and then it can abbreviate the package name. And um, let's now um, look at the open type dialog. So you know op uh, command shift T opens the open type dialog using which you can open any type. So here you can uh, provide wildcard characters like star. You can also specify space if you want the name uh, class name to end uh, with list here, for example. But as you can see here, it uh, shows me uh, the matching uh, types from uh, AWT, Swing, etc. while I'm interested only in the SWT classes. So you can use the type filter to type out, uh, to filter out the uh, packages which you're not interested in. So here I can choose AWT Java X dot Swing. And uh, this will filter out the types from content assist, quick fix proposals, and also while organizing the imports. So you can see that those uh, types are gone. There's a new feature in the open type dialog using um, which you can just copy any text into the open type dialog and it will try to extract the type name uh, on a best effort basis. So let me just paste this whole text, this the path, and it tries to uh, extract the type. I can also try to copy a line from the stack trace and paste it here and again it tries to detect the type and you can directly open it here. And you must also be aware of the uh, open from clipboard. So I have this particular line in the clipboard and I can use open from clipboard. It goes to the type and also to that specific line number which was there and it opens that. So this is really useful if you directly want to jump to the class from the stack trace. And um, now let's uh, take a look at um, some of the hover features. So you know the Java doc hover, uh, when you hover over any method or type, you can see the Java doc, but you can also do a shift hover to view the implementation of the method in place. And you can do a command hover to open all the implementation. So this basically shows you the type hierarchy and you can directly jump to that from here. And um, Eclipse provides very powerful content assist, lot of features associated with content assist. So um, by default, the content assist is activated whenever you press the dot. This is auto activation character. But many times people um, expect it to be uh, activated on any character, uh, any character which is pressed. So I'm going to just select. Uh, these are the alphabets. So I'm going to put this in the content assist preferences. So this is the auto activation triggers for Java. And now you can see that uh, the content assist is activated on any character which is typed. And also the content assist uh, supports subword completion and camel case completion. So I can use, say, camel case, or you can also just type any part of the text, and it will show you all the available completions. And uh, the content assist also has the postfix completion, as you can see here. So let me just to show it to you. So type any uh, text, and then you can um, Use, for example, here I want to insert a if uh, not null check. So I use this postfix template and it automatically completes it for me. I can also do a sys out and this also completes. So this one is not enabled by default. So for this, you need to go to the content assist advanced 
preferences and enable the postfix completion here java postfix template proposals for it to be shown in the content assist proposals and if you want to know what are the templates which will be used so you can go to the templates and just scroll and look for these are the java postfix uh, template proposals which are available and of course you can add your own templates as well uh, there are some new features added in the call hierarchy so here um, for example if i want to view the call hierarchy of this method just say open call hierarchy it shows all the members which are calling this particular method and i can toggle here and this will show all the calls from this method so the new feature here is here we have an abstract method but it also shows all the implementations of this method as potential callees and in this example where we have um, lambda again there are some improvements so here we have a functional interface and this is the function on which i want to call open call hierarchy so you can see this is the calls from function but here when you say members calling function there is a new section called declaration where it shows you the call hierarchy of the declaration part as well now let's take a look at some of the new quick assists which have been added so when you have a string concatenation like this um you can use the quick assist you can invoke the quick assist by pressing command 1 and you can see there's a new quick assist to convert the string concatenation to text block and uh, as you can see only the comment on the last line has been retained so the next one is um, when you have a method with an unused parameter it is there is a warning which is shown and you can use the quick fix here to remove this unused parameter and it also removes it from the method call uh the next one is static favorites so if you have a static method you can call it without uh, qualifying it with the type by making it a static import as you can see here so for example this is the static import and i can call this square root method uh, directly there is an option now to add this particular um, static import as a favorite so next time the content assist can propose it even if it is even if the import is not available so next example is uh, try with resources so here um, you can see that um, there is a warning which says there is a potential resource leak because this is this may not be closed it's closed inside the runnable so you can use the quick fix to surround with try with resources to fix this particular warning there is also a surround with menu so for example you can select this particular line and use just say surround with quick menu and these are the different options which you have these are the templates which can be used here for example you can surround it with a if or a do while any of these so for example let me just show you and i can just add the condition here something like this so the next quick quick assist is if you have an interface and you can use command 1 here to create a new implementation of this particular interface or you can also create a new interface extending this interface it will directly uh, create the uh, open the um, um, wizard to create the new java class if you have a lambda method uh if you have uh, if you have a lambda and you have defined some code inside that this body can be extracted out into a method so you can use the um, quick assist here to extract the lambda body to the method and you can just provide a name here uh the next one is the getters and setters this is not something new but it's really useful and we still see a lot of people using uh, creating getters and setters by hand so whenever you have a field you can use control 1 to create getter and setter for that particular field or you can also use um, the command to create getters and setters for different uh, you can just select multiple fields and you can create them here and um, also if you're trying to rename a particular field you will also want to rename the getter and setter right so the right way to do that is you can use rename in workspace and then you get the options here you can click on this and here you can choose to rename the getter and setter as well when you are renaming the field similarly if you want to delete this particular 
field and you also want to delete the getter and setter, you can go to the outline view. And when you try to delete it, um, so let me see which has the getter and setter. Okay, last name. So when I delete it here, it also asks me if I want to delete the getters and setters. So last one, this is something new which has been added, which is the content assist support in the Javadoc tags when you have uh, for the at C and at uh, link tags. Um, so here I can use content assist. First of all, I can specify the module name and then the package name and also content assist here. Um, so this is a new feature which has been added. And also another new feature here is when you have a sealed class or an, in, or an interface, but it is missing the permits clause. In that case, you get a quick fix to create a new class. So you can just give a name and you can choose it, uh, choose the modifier as well. So it creates the class and also adds the permits clause. Okay, so with this, uh, let's move on and uh, take a look at the quick search. So the quick search is a very powerful search. It can search for the text anywhere in your workspace and it's, uh, it it's, uh, searches the text as fast as you type. And it can also perform case sensitive and case insensitive search, as you can see. Okay, with this, let's move on and take a look at some of the debug features which we have. So there is a um, new um, view, which is the launch configuration view. So earlier the launch configuration um, could be open, was a modal dialog. So that still exists, but we also have a view now where you can see all the available uh, launch configurations. You can also quickly uh, run, debug, or terminate the launch configuration from here, or also edit the launch configurations. Uh, Eclipse provides different types of breakpoints, uh, which you must be aware. So I'll not cover, go through all of them, some of the important ones uh, which I'll be covering. So here we have a breakpoint. You can make it a conditional breakpoint. So first open the properties, and you can uh, select the checkbox here to make it conditional, and you can also specify the condition. So the, um, the execution will be suspended whenever the condition is true. You can also add a trace point by toggle trace point. Um, and uh, trace point is basically a conditional breakpoint which will not suspend the execution. But as you can see, uh, it will print a statement. For example, the name of the method. And also, you can add anything you want over here. And it will print that uh, whenever it comes to that point. Uh, we also have hit point. For example, I can add a breakpoint and specify the hit count. So in um, the hit count, uh, whatever you specify, so whenever the breakpoint is hit three times, the execution will be suspended. We also have a class loader breakpoint. So whenever the class is loaded, the execution will be suspended. So let me just debug this now and show you these in action. So this is the hit count. So when uh, i equal to 3, the execution is suspended. So then you can see at trace point, it has printed the um, statement, but the execution was not suspended. And here you can see there's a conditional breakpoint. It has suspended the execution. And at last, we have the uh, class loader breakpoint, which has suspended the execution. Eclipse also provides uh, trigger points. So a trigger point is a special type of uh, breakpoint which um, basically disables or uh, suppresses all the other breakpoints till it is hit. So let me show you. Um, so I'm going to add multiple breakpoints from the outline view. So I have method entry breakpoints added here on these three methods. And I can make one of the breakpoints as a trigger point. So you can see that these two uh, breakpoints are sus uh, have been suppressed and this is the trigger point so when i execute when i debug this particular application the this particular breakpoint didn't suspend the execution because it was it was uh, suppressed by the trigger point then the trigger point has now suspended the execution and then the next breakpoint will work as is okay let's move on and um, 
look at the Lambda M3 breakpoint. This is one of the uh, most wanted features where people wanted to add um, Lambda entry breakpoint. So this can be easily done by just um, right click and then say toggle Lambda entry breakpoint. And here you can go to the breakpoints view and um, select it and it will highlight where the breakpoint is. When you have a multi-threaded application and uh, you want, okay, before that, uh, don't forget to remove all triggers, otherwise your breakpoints will not hit, um, will, not, will not be hit. Okay, so I have removed the triggers. So whenever you have a, a breakpoint in a multi-threaded application, you can choose to suspend the VM instead of just suspending the thread. So by default, it is suspend thread. So I can do a suspend VM so that uh, the other threads are also suspended when you execute it. Okay, I need to run this, debug this particular. So this is a suspend VM. And as you can see, uh, right now, the debug view also shows you the thread name. And it also has the, uh, it also shows you the process ID. This is again a new feature, and you can also see that in the process, see the process ID in the console and also in the properties. And as before, you can also copy the stack from the um, debug view. Okay, and uh, before the uh, okay, let me move on to the variables view. Some of the new features which we have in the variables view. So I'm going to debug this application. Okay, so you can see all the variables in the variables view. And um, there is a new feature in the variables view where you can choose any uh, field and you can um, Just right click and say open declare type, open declare type hierarchy, and you can also set the object label. So let me just op go here and say set object label. You can set a label, for example, this is an important field, just say, you can see it's highlighted now. And it's also supposed to be highlighted in the expressions view whenever you have that object in the expressions view. And there is also a logical structure uh, toggle here. You can choose to show the logical structure. For example, list is an array list. So what you see here is the logical structure. If I click this, it shows you the actual elements. Uh, similarly, employee has also been created as a logical structure. And you can um, edit the logical structure. So I can go here, right click and say edit logical structure. I can add additional fields here to the logical structure. For example, right now it just has last, last name. I can also add say first name. And here we have content assist support. And now you can see that it also shows the last name in the logical structure. Okay, um, there's another new feature in debug. Um, so in debug, um, you can, um, you know that you can change the value of the variable. For example, here I can just change the value during debugging. But if you try to change a final value, for example, this is the value of the integer object, and if I try to change this, then I will get a warning um, asking if you really want to change the final value. So let's move on to uh, the console. So the console now supports the ANSI escape characters. This is a new feature which has been added. Um, so the ANSI escape characters can be used to provide a styled output. And uh, there is a wiki page with uh, all the information on what all characters can be used. So this is a, just a simplified uh, example which can be um, to show you that you can provide styled output in the console. And also there, uh, the, there's a new feature in the Java Stack Trace console. So let me just open the Java Stack Trace console. Okay, I'll open it from here. 
And when you have a stack trace, from uh, you can see the type and the line numbers are now links. And from here, you can directly go to the line. So this feature was not supported earlier, and it has been supported in the recent releases. OK, uh, five more minutes. So um, I just um, want to show you a couple of features in uh, PDE. So first of all, you can see there are a lot of uh, spies which have been migrated. So these are the E4 spies which have been migrated into, the, into PDE. Uh, so I'll not be going in detail into these spies, but there's a session on this which will be happening. So if you're interested, you can uh, learn about it there. And um, also we have the plugin spy. For example, you can, uh, you can go to any UI element and do Alt Shift F1. It gives you all the information about the contributing plugin. We have the plugin menu spy, which is Alt Shift F2, which you can use to provide, uh, to view the uh, information about the uh, contributing plugin for that particular menu. And we also have Alt Shift F3, which can be used to just view the uh, um, contributing plugin. You just want to know the name of the contributing plugin. And uh, there, is a new, there is also a new feature in the target editor, uh, wherein the tag, so let me just show you by creating a new target file. See, new target definition file. So this is a new target definition file. And here, you can add the source of the plugins. And the new feature here is it can reference another target file. So this was not there earlier. And here, I can choose the location, one of the existing targets. So you can see that uh, the uh, plugins of that target can be referenced from here. So that's all I had in this demo. So uh, I'll just like to show, uh, talk about a few other features. Uh, which were added. So this is the um, encoding change. So uh, uh, by default, Eclipse now has an explicit encoding set on new workspaces. So if there is no encoding which is set while starting the VM or through the product customization, then there is a explicit encoding which is, get, which set, which is set. That is the UTF-8 encoding. And also, the, all new projects will inherit the uh, encoding from the new workspace. The next one. Let me get into this mode. Yeah, so this is again a new feature. So in Eclipse, you can uh, you could always associate um, editors to file types, but now if you can also have a separate file, uh, separate editor associated for large files, and you can specify the type and also the size of the file for which you want to have the um, uh, large file association. So this was the this is a screenshot for the ANSI escape codes which I talked about earlier, and uh, these are the new preferences which I covered, and also enable word wrap is also on by default. Yeah. So uh, the references section. Yeah. Um, so I just want to uh, take a few minutes and show you the Eclipse ID ho homepage. Let me. Okay. I'll just end with this. Home. Yeah, this is the homepage, the Eclipse IDE homepage. So here we have the highlights of the uh, release. Um, so every quarter, every quarter, this is updated with the highlights of that particular release. And you can click on this new and noteworthy link. OK, I'm not connected to the uh, internet. So it shows you um, all the new and noteworthy links for all the different releases. And um, I yeah, OK, have it open here. So you, this is the page. So you can view the new features in the Eclipse SDK. So you have platform Java developers and also plugin developers. And it also has the links for all the new and word, noteworthy for the different projects. And you can also go to the previous new and noteworthy from here. So do take a look at uh, these and uh, can know all the new features which are there uh, coming in each of the releases. So that's all I had uh, for the session. So thank you. Any questions?
Yes. Um, is there a place where you publish like your upcoming features that you're going to be adding to IDE? Is there like a like a roadmap section of the site? Um, so we there there used to be a plan page, uh, but it doesn't have the features as such. So I think the best place to is. Uh, the GitHub where we have the repository. So you can see all the uh, issues which we are working on marked with the target. And uh, also every milestone we, uh, the, when the features are out, as the features are out, they are updated in the news, um, the web news page, the web page which I showed you. So you can know the uh, features as they come in every milestone. Okay, thanks. Hi. So, uh, so when you were presenting about the auto completion, I, I had a question that uh, so you said that it has a lot of templates. So I wanted to know, like, uh, does uh, uh, does it like infer from the context that which template would be the best? Like, does it suggest it, or do you, does the user have to know exactly which template to use? Yeah, it, both are there. So there are um, uh, the templates. You can also specify the context. If you look at the templates, there are different options. Uh, based on the context, you can choose the template. Uh, the templates will also be uh, proposed based on that. Okay, so, like there are suppose like there are hundred templates. So, I, and at some context, if only fifty of them are relevant. So, does the I Eclipse know that? Okay, let's just suggest fifty of them. Yes. To okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.